I love this guitar, but I almost gave up on it because of this. I didn't even know what was wrong. It drove me crazy. I bought this about eight or 10 years ago and uh, it's a Squire Affinity Telecaster. And there was this weird problem where the neck pickup would work, but I'd switch it down here to the bridge and it would come and go. You'd have to wiggle it a little bit. You can see where it kind of went a little crazy and uh, <laughs> uh, wiggling it and bending it. And I'm like, what is going on with this thing? You get it in just the right spot and it would make a connection, it would play. But then there was this weird, just fading in and out sound that drove me crazy. I only paid about $179 or something like that for this years ago. And we've all been to the Luthier and gotten that $100 bill for something we thought would be simple. So I just never did anything about it. And then as a result, this thing sat around for eight or 10 years and I didn't do anything with it or about it. But finally, a friend of mine was like, you know, it's no big deal to learn to solder. It turns out it's a $12 part, the switch for $12. I revived this guitar, brought it back to life. Let's take a look. All right, so here's what it looks like on the inside. I got the mouse really big, so hopefully you can see it here. So this is my first attempt at fixing what I thought the problem was the wiring. And you can see, even with the shoddy job I've done here in my first attempt as an amateur, this still worked, but the problem was still there. So the problem wasn't the wiring problem was the switch itself so uh, you can see this is a Squire Affinity Telecaster wiring you got these two here this is your neck pickup it's kind of backwards uh, this is your bridge pickup and then this uh, connects them both and so uh, each of these wires has to be on those two lugs there and you can run the wire through it's much easier to get the solder on there if you run the wire through the holes and get it attached before you try to get the soldering iron because it feels like you need an extra hand if you're uh, if you're doing that your ground wire here you can just attach that anywhere and it seems to work or it, it did for me so this is a standard telecaster wiring diagram the new switch looked different uh, and I can confirm this works with the Squire Affinity. So I just attached the ground wire uh, to the metal here and that seemed to work fine. Uh, and it's kind of backwards as to what it is here. So on this one, you have your neck and your bridge here. You have your bridge and your neck. So uh, pay attention to which is which there you only have to it's easier than this because here you have to do two over here it's just one so that white wire that would be this wire right here would go right there and this wire right here would go right there and uh, the little wire in between that's the one I had to extend and use some extra wire that came with my soldering kit I just I I stripped the whole thing and ran it through here just like this shows. You probably get some wire more like this, but that's all I had. So I used it, I stripped it, ran it through all of those, put just a tiny bit of solder on it, and then connected that to this white wire. And it, it sounds like a whole brand new instrument. So that's how you can replace the switch on your Squire Affinity Telecaster. So this is a cheap soldering iron from Amazon. It comes in a little kit with everything that you need. I found that 400 degrees is a good temperature for doing this. Now I'm no expert on soldering. This is uh, video. This video is just proof that you can figure it out. Even if you've never done this before, you can make this work and you can save yourself some money. Now I recommend you do this on a cheap guitar. Uh, don't go tearing apart your really good stuff. Uh, let somebody else do that because if you're not paying attention, uh, if you hold this thing on here for too long, uh, you can burn it out. You can mess up parts. You can fry parts and do more damage 
than you had to begin with. But if you're careful, you can really save yourself some money. So uh, 400 degrees, be really careful with this thing. Uh, as soon as you're done, you know, it comes with a little stand, put it in there uh, and make sure there's nothing around it. Don't want you to burn the house down. Uh, as soon as you're, you're done completely, go ahead and unplug it. Make sure you turn everything off, let it cool down before you put it away. Um, if this gets dirty, you can uh, put it in some, some little steel wool and, uh, and clean, clean off that uh, excess solder on, on the end there. But really simple. So uh, you look up your wiring diagram and for the Squire Affinity, this was the switch that it came with and I couldn't find a diagram on this. Uh, you had big wires from the pickups uh, on each end bridged to both of these. Uh, and you had a, a single uh, single wire going to the, the middle uh, position here. And uh, so you had these posts or lugs connected to the rest of your wiring there. I couldn't even find that diagram on the internet, but if you just look up standard Telecaster wiring, if you get the real fender switch, you can look it up on Amazon, get it for $12, uh, made in Mexico fender switch. You can follow the most common diagram that's out there and it looks like this. So here, here's what you need to do. Your ground wire, you can just put anywhere on, on the side there that worked for me. Uh, this little guy will take care of the extra solder that you have. So especially when you're removing the old stuff, uh, all you do, press this down, put it near, like as soon as you solder that, that old stuff off, put it right down here, push the button, and it sucks it right up. And that gets it out of the way. So let's say your wires are a little short and what you already have there's an easy fix for that if, if you have some wire strippers that's the best tool or if you just have some wire cutters or pliers with that on there you can lightly uh, crimp it and then pull and uh, you get this nice stripped wire here uh, you can extend any wire that's there using the extra wire this just came with this came with the soldering kit and so uh, if you need to extend anything, just attach this here and then do the same thing to the other end, solder that to your wire. And uh, you don't want them touching, it'll short something out, uh, but you can connect it that way. You could put some shielding back on it if you're worried about them touching inside there. But as long as you keep them far enough apart, uh, you should, should be fine there. Uh, so you can lay this across there. Uh, if it's supposed to go to two posts, like on the original one, I thought that just the wiring was the problem. It turns out it was actually the switch. But anyway, this one has to go to, to two places. So you lay it on there. Now the hard part of all this, uh, you need an extra set of hands to make it work. Uh, if you've got some something around the house that can crimp it and hold it, uh, it'd be good. But if you see, here's your soldering wire. You can hold them uh, in a way that they're both together. Takes a little finagling here. Uh, it's really good if you can poke this wire through the little holes that are there and where it'll stay on its own. You can twist it here, uh, poke it through the holes bend it a little bit and then it's it's going to stay there and then you don't have to worry about holding two wires but uh, if you can get both of them together all you got to do is touch the soldering iron to that it'll turn liquid there'll be a little bit of smoke and um, it'll smell so <laughs> you want to do this with some good ventilation. I just laid mine on the floor in the basement and opened the, the door, got a little fresh air. And uh, the whole thing really, it doesn't take that long. The biggest hurdle is just confidence and uh, you know getting all this to work. But you just lay that wire on there, touch it to your soldering wire and, 
and it's done. You don't want to hold soldering iron on there too long because uh, like I said, you could fry the circuitry down in here, but just a little bit and it's done. I mean, it's really quickly, it will stick there. If you, if you touch these first and get them a little bit warm, then it might stick a little better, but it, that's not necessary. It'll still stick uh, no matter how you, you do it there, but don't hold it too long. It, it could fry that. Now that's if your wire becomes disconnected. Uh, if your wire's already together and you need to completely replace the switch like I did, uh, just touch it to the, the wires that are already connected there and it, it'll only take a second and that wire will come loose. Now, before you do any of this, <laughs> you wanna take a picture of what your wiring looked like in case you need to put it back the way it was or in case you totally mess it up and you have to take it to a professional to fix uh, what, what you've messed up. Um, if we're just talking about the switch, that's a very inexpensive part, really easy uh, to, to get a new one there. So that's, that's how you can bring your guitar back to life. Uh, just replace the switch, uh, buy a soldering iron, really handy, really useful thing to have around. Uh, you know, you can experiment, you can have some fun. These parts are way cheaper than you, you might think. For about $20, you can get a whole set of Alnico pickups for a Strat. Uh, you can get Alnico humbuckers for a Les Paul. You can replace parts and upgrade your gear very inexpensively, uh, and you can do it yourself with these tools. So. If you've been holding back, can I do this? Yes, you can. You have to be careful. Uh, you have to be patient. You have to take your time, but you can save yourself a lot of money, have a lot of fun doing something handy and useful. Keep playing.